meeting every Sunday. Um, ah. That was the great. Thank you, Emory. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this service on this beautiful, gorgeous, sunny morning. Everybody gets an extra star in the crown for showing up to church today, even though I know you'd rather be fishing or at the beach or walking or hiking. So uh, good on you. A couple of things to announce. Uh, we will have the vigil today at one o'clock, as always. Conklin tonight at nine o'clock by Zoom. Next Sunday, we are worshiping outdoors for those who are able to join us outdoors at 9 and 11 in the Rose Garden, uh, which for those of you who have no idea about what that is, we have two sort of green areas in the cathedral. One is at the top of the hilly parking lot, which is the Memorial Garden, and the other one borders our lower parking lot and Battery Street. Um, and that's the larger space. That's where we will gather on Sunday, next Sunday at 9 and 11 for Eucharist and, uh, and fellowship. Please, if you can bring a chair, um, please wear your mask. And um, yeah, if you can come early at eight o'clock and help us set up, that would be terrific. If you can stay late after the 11 o'clock and help us tear down, that would also be terrific. Also, if you are planning on being at the vigil at one o'clock, if you'd like to bring a brown bag lunch and hang out, um, uh, at a safe distance from each other and eat a meal together, that would be wonderful. Uh, we'll do that before the vigil begins at one. For those of you who are unable to uh, be there in person or feel unsafe or unsure being there in person, we will be Zooming both services as well. So you can join us at nine or 11. Um, we're working all of that out, um, but we're pretty, pretty confident that we'll be able to Zoom that at the same time that we're, we're worshiping live. So uh, please feel free to tune in. It'll be the same link that it always is at nine or 11 for the Zoom service as well. The Bishop has asked us to let you know in light of the CDC's uh, really overnight changing of the, their guidance around um, how safe vaccinated people should feel um, that the, the restart committee of the diocese will be issuing uh, newer guidelines this week but we know that they're gonna lift a whole lot of restrictions and uh, the staff, we will be talking about this at staff meeting on Wednesday and I will be presenting some options to the vestry on Thursday. So you should know more by the Friday newsletter about or perhaps by Sunday about what that's gonna look like for us moving forward, um, at least as far as we know. Um, so this is good news all around that, uh, that the CDC has put out that vaccinated people should feel fairly safe. Stan and I are fully vaccinated, Mark is almost fully vaccinated, so I'm looking forward to singing the hymns this morning uh, right here in the cathedral. Uh, and do you have anything to announce? Yes, I have a couple of things. Uh, we have a VIA local organizing ministry action coming up on June 2nd, Wednesday. This will be online 6.30 to 8. It, it focuses on corrections reform, particularly at the women's prison in South Burlington. We hope to have, we think we're going to be having the Commissioner of Corrections and a few other people to listen to our research and to respond to our call for action. Um, also, we have a youth confirmation class this afternoon at 2.30. This will be one of our last two as we await a time for confirmation this summer. And uh, we have one more children's chapel. We had a lovely time this morning. We have one more on June 6th. Also, I believe that we have uh, received nearly $3,000 in our social justice in gathering, and I'm very grateful for that. As are uh, the concerns that we support. Thank you. Thank you. Without uh, Mark, do you have anything? No. Nope. Oh, great. Then let us prepare our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls to worship God.
Greta, you're muted. Um, we're also only seeing the PowerPoint not in presentation mode. I'm not quite sure why, but we're just seeing all of the slides. see on our monitor is not what you were seeing at home. Fooled once again by Zoom. There we go. One more time, I'm going to ask you to unmute your devices for the opening acclamation. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, 
and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all that time when the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the 11 apostles. Here ends the reading. The reader can go ahead and unmute. Okay. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. <clears throat> Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Here ends the reading. Oh, 
from the Gospel according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept their word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me I have given to them and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. <clears throat> and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have, so that they may have my joy made complete in 
themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Here ends the reading. In the name of God, the creator of love, God the beloved, and God the eternal spirit of all love. How many of you have had the experience of being picked last or hoping against hope that you would not be chosen last? I have. When it came to sports that required throwing a ball, I was often picked last. Perhaps this was good for me as I learned to set aside embarrassment or shame and remember my other skills. Today, the seventh Sunday of Easter is sandwiched between the ascension of our Lord and the day of Pentecost, when violent winds and tongues of fire heralded the coming of the Holy Spirit. Today, we hear an interesting and rather humble story of the picking of a disciple to replace Judas. And we get to meet two men, Matthias and Joseph called Barsabbas, known as Justice. This is their only mention in the Gospels, and yet we are told their names, unlike many women in scripture who unfortunately remain anonymous. They are, to use sports metaphor, utility players, or in theater lingo, walk-ons, actors without lines, and yet they are mentioned in the biblical playbill. After the choosing, neither one of them is ever mentioned again. At first, I found myself identifying with justice, feeling sorry for him, and perhaps in indulging in some long-delayed self-pity about not having been picked. I hope you noticed when Pam Dart was reading the story from Acts that the winner was chosen by casting lots. The 11 remaining disciples did something like tossing the dice, maybe picking straws, flipping a coin, choosing a random number, or some form of chance based on luck. Of course, they prayed first. It turns out there's a word for this kind of choosing sortition, and it was a favored way of choosing leaders in the classical world. A basic tenet of this method of sortition is that all in the running for a position or office were already deemed highly qualified. So whoever was picked would be a good choice. Perhaps there's wisdom in this. We all know experientially the, device, the divisiveness that comes from our current two-party voting system, where especially in close elections, the losing side, whether liberal or conservative, is resentful, often left to lick its wounds, sometimes claiming the result was unfair, and sometimes even refusing to accept it. Now back to Matthias and Justice, who I believe are stand-ins for all of us, we who are faithful yet unpretentious followers of Jesus, ordinary women and men, every person's, if you will. I assume that justice needed at least a day or two to recover from losing the casting of lots. Even so, we can rest assured that both of them, the winner and the loser, continued to follow the way of Jesus 
with zeal and devotion and continue to work for a new and more just world in the oppressive time in which they lived. And I like to think of both of, and I like to think that both of them were present at the day of Pentecost, both receiving the grace of the Holy Spirit, both knowing once and for all that they were surrounded by God and completely filled by the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit were in them, and they were in God. So I'd like to declare today, the seventh Sunday in Easter season, I'd like to declare it the Sunday of the ordinary person. Down-to-earth people like all of us who live our lives the best we can, parent our children with love, reach out to help each other and our neighbors, and try to do what is right. In today's reading from John's Gospel, Jesus in his farewell prayer or instructions to his followers tells them that they are to stay on earth, remaining in the world despite his having departed. And as a final act, he sanctifies them, just as we are sanctified each time we hear the words of sanctification in the Eucharistic prayer. These are the words of sanctification of the people from Eucharistic prayer A. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. Many of us make the sign of the cross when we heard, hear these words to further mark our sanctification. So just what does it mean for a person or a thing to be sanctified? It means being set apart, set apart from the ordinary as something sacred, set apart to carry out actions that are sacred, actions that bring us closer to God's beloved community. Think of holy water. It is water in either state, but after it has been blessed, for us, it becomes sacred and we dip our fingers in the font and make the sign of the cross. When we do this, we are reenacting and remembering our own sanctification as Christians in baptism and in communion. We are set apart as sacred. In the time before the early 1970s, when women were or denied ordination in the Episcopal Church, there were groups of women who organized sacred communities, many formed in the end of the 19th century, a time that women in many places of the world were becoming newly empowered. They were called deaconesses, and they created schools and community houses. They were truly servant leaders. They did amazing work, were formative in the new definition of the diaconate, and were leaders in forging a new and more active place for women in the church, as well as in the world at large. While they were not allowed to be ordained, they were set apart. Set apart by bishops, sometimes but not always, with ceremonies that included the laying on of hands by the bishop. Like the disciples and the followers of Jesus, who were sanctified or set apart to do sacred work in the world, so were the deaconesses, and so are all of us. Jesus called his disciples to stay in the world and do the work that needed to be done. And we are also, like Matthias, Justice, the other disciples and the deaconesses, called to stay in our world and continue working for fairness, justice, and peace, for an end to racism, racism, bias, oppression, and greed. Jesus called them and us to keep working for the kingdom of God on earth, even when the end is not in sight, even when they or we feel abandoned and alone, threatened, or apprehensive. They were called to make a new world, and so are we. I believe that the hope of the world lies in each of us, 
ordinary people doing day in and day out what we believe is right and good, testifying to the truth. God's truth is wide and expansive, not limited to a single gender, race, economic group, age, sexual orientation, religious faith, geographical setting, or place of power. Christians have erred in trying to narrow the vision of God's love, to make it shine only on one chosen people, to endow it with false limits of our own. Does that last phrase ring a bell? Over the years, Mark Howe has helpfully taught me that some of the best theology the church has to offer is in her hymns, and that many hymns are potent and poignant homilies in and of themselves. Just before this homily, we sang one of my favorite hymns, number 469, there's a wideness in God's mercy. Listen again to the words from the third and fourth verse. There is grace enough for thousands of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper room of bliss. But we make God's love too narrow by false limits of our own. And we magnify God's strictness with a zeal God will not own. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. We are all, no matter our station in life, like trees planted by streams of sacred water, strong and bearing fruit. We are all ordinary people, sometimes chosen first, sometimes second, and sometimes last. It does not matter the order, we are all God's beloved, all sanctified and set apart. To live in the warm light of God's grace, to do God's work and to broaden the circle of God's love, there is room for everyone. And now my diaconal exhortation to all of you, go forth in peace to do the work God has given you to do. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Shannon, for our Dean Greta, for this gathering, 
and for all ministers and people. We pray for St. Peter's Church, Lindenville, and for the Anglican Church of Korea. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people for relief worldwide for countries where COVID-19 infections continue unabated and where health systems are struggling to meet the need, for the end of aggression and violence in Gaza, for the indigenous people of Chile. Pray for justice. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. For Dio Dorothea and Na Aku, Michael, Penny, Lois, Jean, Bill, Carol, Ella, Ted, Chuck, Ron and Jackie, Michael, Lillian, Daniel, Peter, Sandy, Stuart, Mary, Emily, Marion, Rachel, Elizabeth, Margaret, Dave, Pat, Rick, Debbie, Naomi, and Helen. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of God. For those who are in the discernment process, Susan McMillan, Kenzo Ahn, and for our seminary, Bram Renfeld. For members of the Youth Confirmation Group, Anna, Emma, Jonas, Gong, Paige, Sylvia, and Thomas. Pray that they and we may find and be found I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those killed in Gaza fighting. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for friends and family, especially those with birthdays this week, Ellen Rubin, David Blake, prayers of joy for the birth of Dorothea Vians. We offer prayers of thanks for the bounty of God's creation, for the beauty of nature, for iris, lilacs, trillium, trout lily, may apple, and so much more. We also offer prayers of thanks for the social justice ingathering of about $3,000. Pray in gratitude for all of God's blessings. At this time, please offer your own prayers silently or aloud at home, or enter them in the chat box. Pray for the life and work of Carol Beams. Pray for sunshine next Sunday. Pray for Rachel and Robert. Pray for the protection of the Middlebury Town water supply and all creation's sacred waters from pesticides. Pray that migrant farm workers not lose hope as we wait for Hannaford's to decide to join Milk with Dignity. For the repose of the soul of Libby, Libby Bennett a dear friend from college who died last week. In Thanksgiving for a wonderful visit from grandchildren and their parents, their mom. Pray for a friend 
who lives in Africa, protection from attacks. Gratitude for a successful completion to the academic year in local colleges. Gratitude for all the many ways families are formed and happy stepmother's day to all stepmoms. Please pray for the needs and hopes of this community. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now lifting our voices in the words that are the language that is closest to our heart, we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon and among you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Hey. Hello. Here we go. 